Excuse me, miss, you dropped your... Crabtree and Evelyn scarf. <laughs> We've been on this very interesting journey of like, what is a parody? And how do you market that? What is the value of that versus a new musical? And that's been a very interesting sort of dialogue that we've been massaging as we've created this. I think I would love for Titanic to be a show that not only sort of lays new ground in terms of like, what is a new musical versus what is a parody? Because we have elements of both, to be honest. But I also would love for parodies to be able to be viewed in a more elevated manner. You know, I, I would hope that we can add to the sense that, wait, parodies can be effective, touching, have tons of heart, can operate on all cylinders, just like a hit Broadway show. Um, so that I, I would hope that like, maybe we can change the, the focus a little bit more, Re refocus how parodies are seen. I like to consider us a new comedy, even though we parody the movie. I definitely think there's something to um, what we've done in kind of reinventing the wheel of this genre, making it really clever and super tight and bringing in everything from nostalgia to the current day. And I, I just think it's a, it's a mix of everything. So it's not just a straight up parody. There's definitely new moments that make it a, a brand new musical. Do you know who was first in line for dinner? Me. I love dinner time. It is my favorite time. But as I was standing at the buffet, who did I see there? But Rose. She looked so beautiful, waiting for her new love, Jack. I got so inspired to sing about it, I decided to invite onto the ship my dear friend and two-time Grammy Award winner, Sir Pibo Brasson, to sing, yes, to sing our hit duet, Beauty and the Beast. How are you? And when I asked Disney for the rights to this song, they say to me, LOL, who do you think you are? And I say to them, I am Celine fucking Dion. We're all idiots. The entire cast is a bunch of idiots. <laughs> and we just try to make each other laugh on stage. And I think that that transcends. I think we wrote a very, very funny script. I mean, I don't want to pat myself on the back, but I will. I'm very proud of that. <laughs> so I think that the humor shines through, no matter what person is playing it, no matter what understudy is on, I think it's a very smart book. And, I, and, and that is because we just did this with so much joy and without a care in the world. And like, hey, whatever happens, happens. And now here we are. They did love it. Yeah. They, any, any of those like moments where yeah. bullshit happens yeah. and y'all have to recover, they live. It's yeah. like that SNL breaking and trying to hold it together yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. My mom is always like, it's so much fun to watch you guys try to hold it together mm -hmm. or try to come back from that. And I'm like, all right, well, fair, but I, that can't be the whole show. Yeah. Connie deliberately makes me try to break in certain scenes, but he'll just like look at me like, that during Because You Loved Me. And so I tried doing it one night to him, uh -huh. but you were in the audience and you saw me doing it and you're like, what the hell is she doing? <laughs> 
Just me behind my mask, like... Yeah, be like, Marla? <laughs> Marla, are you okay? <laughs> uncut gems, I think, is when... Yeah, uncut gems. That's a big, that's yeah. a big moment. Because then he makes Alex laugh, and then Alex breaking makes him laugh, and then watching him break makes me laugh, uh -huh. and then I want to keep going, so then I look at Alex and I try to make her break again. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> it's a, it's a uh, downward yeah, spiral. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's a downward spiral. I wonder, you know something we should, we're going to need to address is uh, your whole improv scene. Why, is it bad? No, what? Uh, okay. Titanic is a Celine Dion fever dream where Celine Dion thinks she was on the ship in 1912. And so she recounts the tale through the, her eyes and her songs. I think that's a good log line for it. It's one of the biggest movies of all time, right? She is a global icon. She is beloved all over the place. And the more I dug into it, I realized that she never wanted to record My Heart Will Go On. She lives with a level of disdain for that song. <laughs> she tells a story about it in her shows. And so I just thought, wait a minute, that is a good catch. What if she could retell Titanic through her lens with the knowledge that she didn't ever want to sing that song and she kind of got stuck with it, but it also made her a global superstar. So for me, there was always that little inside connection that she never wanted to sing it. And so give her, give her a mic, and let her talk about it. I was living in Los Angeles and I was directing shows at this dinner theater type place called Rockwell Table and Stage. And so we were doing these movie to musical parodies like Devil Wears Prada and Scream and Troop Beverly Hills where you would take this iconic movie and you would add these kind of pop culture songs to it. And once we were doing the Scream parody, I looked at them and I said, we have to write our own thing. So we were having drinks at the bar one night after the show and I was definitely a little tipsy. And I go up to Marlon and I'm like, Marla, we're, the next parody music we're gonna do is, I'm gonna be, we're gonna do Titanic and, and it's gonna be all Celine Dion music and you're gonna be Celine and I'm gonna be Jack and Alex is gonna be Rose and I think it's gonna work. And at the time I was a little bit tipsy. I was like, cool, 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 tight, 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 never gonna happen. I was like, I don't wanna be Celine Dion. She's the greatest singer of all time. So I just thought it was like a funny pipe dream. And Marla was, then looked at me and she was like, never gonna happen, sweetie. Uh, and then that night I went home and I just had this like burst of, of energy and the light bulb clicked. And I sat at the computer and I started writing out this outline of every, every Celine Dion song from her catalog and how it would fit into the outline of the movie. And miraculously it worked. And then two years later, um, Ty called me and he said, I think it's time to bring that idea that you had to life. And in that instant, something said to me, it's time to write the Titanic show. I immediately texted Connie and Marl and I said, we gotta work up out of this dark space. Let's just get together on Monday nights. Let's write, let's build these musical arrangements. And, and, and that's really where it came from for me. Um, the need to create, the need to laugh, the need to build something that in a time when I felt like I had no control over anything, at least I had this one little passion project that I could look forward to every Monday night when we would go to Constantine's apartment and just get silly and, and create. The night. Okay. Let's go uh, to places for this. We'll go from the same place that we started from. I just want to give them, you know, the ography. Um, we won't do the curtain. I think, Priscilla, we can probably skip lights. Is this cue enough for you guys? Do you need more light? Would you like color? Let's go from uh, Celine's reveal, please. Yes, full out, please. How is everybody doing over here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how is everybody doing over here? And how is Patty LaFond doing over here? I'm Celine Dion. Hey! I love you, Patty. You set my heart on fire. You fill me with love. Ah! Uh -huh. 
The writing process has been interesting and super fun. Every time we would throw it up and do a new reading of it or a new cast member would come in, we'd find new things. Or a couple of months in time would go by. And, you know, we pull a lot from present day and top 40, like pop culture and hits and things like that and what's going on and, you know, in the world today. And we have to stay current because I think that's what really adds to our show. Um, so it's forever changing. The three creators uh, and Nicholas, we are very, very symbiotic, which I think is what makes the show so wonderful, is that there's a lot of love and there's a lot of respect for each other. And what we usually do is we let an actor play, we let them do it a couple times, and if it's still not working, we'll convene and we'll say, okay, this isn't, this isn't working, we gotta cut it, or try this instead. We have been very good at respecting each other's boundaries and saying yay or nay, and usually we decide upon something as a team. Although one, sometimes one of us goes rogue, mainly me, and I'm like, cut it, get rid of it. And Ty's like, no, don't do that, it's good. Um, he's, a lot more <laughs> he's a lot more gracious than I am. We try to like, keep a balanced approach uh, when we're deciding what works. And you know, if, if, if two of us agree that something works great and the other doesn't, then you know, majority wins, usually, is how we operate things. Um, but as a director, I always want to hold space for, well, let's just try this. If we're not sure this is gonna work, we have the benefit of a week of previews, let's have option A that we try first, and then if three nights of that is not great, then we'll try option B. You know, it's, for me, it's, all, it's this like filtration process of seeing what is the best idea. Best idea wins, always. There's something in me, Jack. I don't know what it is, but I can't wait to find out. What's this? Just some sketches. Oh, Jack. These are quite good. These are very good. You think? You have a gift, Jack. You do. You see people. It's a cat. The biggest challenge, I think, is finding the balance of giving you enough Celine and enough of the film, the iconic lines, the iconography of this, and you know, I'm flying, Jack, I'm flying, while not going too far into just doing the film on stage um, and building our own plot. You know, I think that was really important for me. Having done so many parodies, I really wanted the plot of this and the book of this to stand alone without the songs, without the movie, and I think we I think we're getting there. Should we just do the whole thing? Uh, I think we should just do the whole thing. Yeah, whatever you want. Yeah. Okay, great. I'm here. And really, like, the focus of it is the retardando going into the mashup chorus. Yes, I know. I know what you care about here. Yeah. Let's go from rehearsal letter B. Let me get the right kid. Okay. Uh, rehearsal letter B. Yeah, so this is the... Oh, I can't do it. Jesus, move. Uh, no. And he goes... All that I... And all that I'll be Means nothing at all If you can't be with me Your most innocent kid Oh, your sweetest caress seduces me. I want you to have it, Rose. There's nothing I couldn't give you, nor anything I deny you, so don't deny me. We're going to do it tonight. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Rose. Went to bed scared, alone, conflicted. Would she have sex with Cal while wearing a necklace from Jared's? <laughs> Getting to experience people's reactions and um, just seeing the masses laugh and truly forget about their lives for 90 minutes is the biggest blessing and uh, I could ever have ever dreamed for or, or ever happened with this show. It feels right for this moment 
I feel like we've all been through a terrible time these past two years. And if you can just check out for 90 minutes and come to a, a piece of theater that is light and fun, and it was gonna you know, hit you with some nostalgic, beautiful moments from this movie, also the incredible songs, that to me is, is why we do this. When I die, I wanna be standing in the back of the theater or something I created is running for years and just be a ghost in the back and, and get to witness all the smiles and, and laughter that I get to give to people. That's, that's what matters the most to me. Um, and so I would hope that whatever, whatever the life of this show is, that I, I always say like global domination, which is maybe a harsh phrase, but I, want, I would love to do this show all over the place in every language and give as many people on this planet as possible the joy that those 165 people are getting every night. This is the most joyous, humbling, surreal experience of my life. I will take myself as an actor out of it. As a struggling writer for, you know, eight years in New York, eight years in Los Angeles, to have something that I have co-written, that people are laughing at, that people are saying it's the funniest thing that they've ever seen, it, it makes my head explode. Um, I feel like this is a once in a lifetime opportunity and I try to immerse myself in how grateful I am every single day because I don't know if I'll ever experience something like this again. So the joy that I feel is profound. So if you know the words, please, please sing along with us. And I'm sure some of you